Sometimes Ganesha's trunk would grow so long, it would curl halfway around the world. On this day, he followed his nose to a flat land far, far away. The forests of my land are overgrown, and I shall wish for that again one day. But today I must seek some flat terrain upon which to trumpet my song. Thus, Ganesha followed his trunk to a flat land far, far away. Not yet blonde as wheat, but vital green, bursting yellow, indigo, magenta, persimmon, accru, fuchsia, rose, and violet. Here my trumpet's call bounces not against the countless trunks of the great banyan trees, but rolls across the plains, carried upon the wind. As he ambled forth, Ganesha chanced upon one equally wise, a small brown gopher, one hundredth his size. Ganesha, asked the gopher, when will it end? When a hangman is found shackled when the knight who rides the white horse becomes the shepherd who feeds the white lamb. <clears throat> Once after a tempest, the rightful monarch Prospero released his airy spirit Ariel from bondage. But on this day, it would be Krishna who released the monarch with wings of amber and black. Outside the doors of a green glass house, Krishna gently opened the small wax-coated pouch, the frigid imago sleeping inside. With a few flutters, the monarch drowsily drifted upon his shoulder. Fly, fly, my son, until you reign these lands, from the great lakes to the OML forests, as they are rightfully yours. May your kin return next spring. Now I release thee. As Shiva stood inside the 24 bus on Sherbrooke Street, his joints aligned with the spirit of the machine, he gazed at a white dandelion puff gliding through, drifting by a Buddhist monk in red and white sneakers, pausing to circle just once over a violet left shoulder pad, finally slinging itself back towards the light outside. This time it was a butterfly, black with red spots. She just glided in like a dandelion puff startling the lady beside him. And as the driver tapped the brakes, the butterfly found her way out a window crack on the driver's side. Now a dragonfly, shimmering electric blue, that popped its head in just to have a look and flew out again into the shade of a bush. But as the bus lurched apart, the dragonfly was quick to dart back inside, gliding right by Shiva's mane finally sitting down in the rear. And as Shiva played with the straps of his knapsack, he noticed a wasp upon the front pole, acting droll, fiddling its wing. I followed the ravine flowing through a sparse wood, which brought me to an ancient spot, nestled now between highway and construction lot. I gazed up, surprised by his stature, no different from his kin. The squirrel god, gold and brown, spake from the limbs of a green maple. We are of the same maker. I turned, humbled, as a honeybee landed on my finger. The mallard sits proud upon La Fontaine Pond, shining royal green, flecked with black, its sky-blue eyeball blinking back. Shiva, spake the mallard, you sneaky devil, you have snuck into those bushes to have yourself a tinkle. Hurry, duck, I love you so much. May I unclip your wings? But Shiva, if you gave me back my wings, I might fly off. Then who would gaze upon me?
Krishna explored Orford one day. He boarded a canoe with Rana, his eternal love. They slipped into the great pond, flanked by loon and great blue heron. Gently they paddled together. They gazed as the loon would dive, for minutes at a time submerged. After several such bobbings, the loon later emerged beside the small vessel. Could you keep this place in mind? As they tried to respond, the loon dove beneath them, gliding out of sight, perhaps in search of dessert. Then a great blue heron landed on the canoe's ridge, talons scraping ever so slightly, setting the starboard slightly lower than the port. Fair travelers, how do you fare? Well, we've been entranced by the loon over there, now blessed by your presence. Tis nothing, my dears. Tis us who are blessed to have two such as you here, gentle folks who value this space. I must leave you now. Enjoy the day. Thus Krishna and Rana continued to paddle for some time before they set the canoe on a beach, leaving it as they dined. They ventured on foot through narrow paths among sugar maple and pine, pausing here and there to enjoy the smells. Finally, they spotted a doe and her two fawns, so close, but with no care. Oh, old wrinkled lime, old wrinkled lime, do you have some juice left for me? I will cut you to see what's inside, and yes, you seem so dry, but we will try and squeeze out what essence is left. A few drops here and a few drops there, and from one quarter gushed even a bit of a stream. Thanks for waiting for me. Thank you very much. It was a real privilege to read that from front to back.